Get with it, Brad. All right, we're here with another finance video for my latest project I just completed in Bristol, PA. It was a three bed, one bath, single family rancher that I completely gutted and redid every single thing in the house, short of ripping up the floor joists and reframing the whole house. Well, I, I even reframed you reframed most the inside, of it. yeah. Yeah, and had to fix part of the roof. But anyway, we're gonna break down the financials in certain segments, starting with purchase, settlement costs, and we're going to go to contractors, you know, who I paid, the subcontractors I paid throughout this project. Then we're going to go to materials, Home Depot, Lowe's, 84 Lumber, Plumbing Pen Supply. And then we're going to go to services, dumpsters, taxes, insurance. Then we're going to talk about timeline, total invested, what I rented for the property, and then we're going to go cash on cash return. So those are a bunch of segments we're going to do in this video, and we're going to break it all down for you. We're going to start with the purchase. So the property listed, I think 160, something like that. I think I made an offer of like 140 or 145. He told me the seller didn't have enough money to cover, blah, blah, blah. We agreed on 150. After settlement costs, it came out to $156,139.28. I got a commission off that since I'm my own real estate agent at a 2.5%, which was $3,750. So I got a check from my broker, not for $3,750 minus a little bit for broker fees and stuff. Each broker is different how much they take out, which brought it out to $152,389.28. Total invested up to this point. Now, that got you the brand new, well, I mean, I call it brand new house, but it got you the old dilapidated crappy house free correct. and clear in your name. Yeah, cash. Then started working on it. So contractors, HVAC, yeah. gutters, tree guys, vinyl floors, some tile. I paid a, my buddy some to do some tile work, countertops, a bunch of other contractors, day laborers, stuff like that. Name all the contracts drywall that you, that you did. You I have said, them all listed there. Yeah, right? drywall. Well, not all of them. It's kind of a little messed up. But the drywall to hang it and finish it, I supplied material was three thousand dollars. Demo was twenty nine hundred dollars. I did not feel like demoing this house. It was plaster and lath, and I'm so glad I spent that money because <laughs> it's brutal. This house was really gross when Mike got it too. It wasn't you, the worst, worst, but I mean, it was pretty gnarly. It was just a house from the early 1900s, and it was plaster and lath and. To demo them houses really is not fun. Right. I'm just talking about like, it looks like crackheads live there. Yeah. Tree removal. I had to get it. Well, I still haven't gotten it down because Pico is a pain to deal with, but tree's going to cost me $3,000. There's a huge tree right on top of electrical service that I had to do. So one of the things I always look for at, at houses I buy, trees. Mm -hmm. They are not cheap to do. You ain't going to do them yourself. And if there's a bunch of big trees everywhere and you have to get them cut down, it's going to cost a lot of money. And let me tell you something, if you're going to keep the property, you probably want to get it cut down because they, they grow into your sewer and they fall in your house and they clog your gutters and all that stuff. So like I said, tree's not cheap. Anyway, those are some of the subcontractors that I, that I hired. You can look at the Excel sheet like Rich was saying. And then we'll move on to materials. This is the big hitter, 84 Lumber. Home Depot. Home Depot, Lowe's, Sherwin-Williams, Penn Supply, uh, Denny Electric, all these types of supply houses that I had to pay. $37,372.93. That's a lot. Now we run on the services. Dumpsters. I, I spent a lot of money on dumpsters. This house is 1,100 square foot. I, I spent $3,200 on dumpsters mm -hmm. because it was a lot of trash. And it's another thing I look at in houses, how much trash is in there. With the cost of dumpsters these days, I'd rather not have to buy as many if I don't have to. Township permits, uh, UNO permits, use an occupancy for our area. Rental, rental permit. permit. Bristol Township charged me $100 every year just to be able to rent the property. Insurance, the builder's risk, the liability, the vacant policy, all that stuff. It adds up $6,609.61. So it brings us to a grand total. $226,691.32 grand total all in. Right. And the baby. project took about... And the project took from October 21 20. to... July, June 20th. 28th. So what is that? Six, nine eight, months? Yeah, a little bit under nine months, mm -hmm. right? Or something like that. Yeah. Now, granted, I mean, a lot of people might have watched our Langhorn video at the same time as this. You know, like we, were, we worked in the Langhorn house at the same exact time that Mike worked on this house. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I mean, it sounds like a long time. Mike has a day job as a plumber and then worked on the Langhorn house that we have videos for and worked on this Bristol house. And 
he settled in his Bristol house the day before we settled in a Langhorn house. So it was, it was a lot going on for you. But, yeah, and this one I did it to the nines. Yeah, it was everything's really nice. brand new, mm-hmm. so I don't have to work. You know, the roof is brand new. The you are getting are to the point now, now, though, where you're hiring a lot more contractors, which is nice. To I a mean, certain point, yeah. yeah. You know, you're able to you're able to afford it now. Mm-hmm. We look back at your first house in Trevos, and you did like everything by Correct. yourself. And even Croydon, I did like a lot almost of it. everything. Yeah. You know, cost money to hire these contractors. Not just just about saving money. You got to have the money to pay these guys. Mm-hmm. So if you want to get something done in six months, you better have seventy-five thousand dollars in six months to get the house done. Right. Because you know the total I put into this house was seventy-five thousand dollars, pretty mm-hmm. much. So you better have that money if you want to get it done in six months. If you don't, it might take nine months, or you know, or you got to do more work yourself. Those are things you uh, got to think about. And then you had it rented by August first. August first so through <clears throat> July, you were finding a renter. I mean, the the first week, Fourth of July, kind of took the week off, and then. Yeah, and I did that process through Zillow. Right. They offer a free rental service. Yeah, which like, is actually pretty nice. Yeah, it's not like they they give you the um, background check, their credit report, the income. Something you should do to like verify the income is ask for pay stubs. Well, that's what Zillow does, I think. No, I think they just write it in because our renter at the other property, he gave us his income, and it's just like a basic document. And then we asked him for pay stubs to basically kind of prove it. Okay. Um, so it's something to do. If you are going to find a renter, ask for pay stubs. It's a good idea. And then if you're a little wary of the person, you know, you had a person that you were about to rent to mm-hmm. and you act, you said, give me a reference, you know, and they, yeah, for whatever genius. reason, did. <laughs> I mean, maybe they just figured, you know, if I don't, they're, he's definitely not going to accept me, but maybe they were expecting to call your bluff and uh, you did call the reference and they were in the process of getting evicted. Yeah. So. Yeah. That's a no go. We don't. It was tough finding renters for you know. It wasn't. It's not the most sought after neighborhood, but I think I found a good renter. Yeah. So we'll see. Listen, it's part of the game. It's part of the rental game. You want to get good ones. You're gonna get bad ones. But, but you rented for twenty one fifty. It's a lot of money. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's a brand new house, but it's only three bed, one bath, eleven hundred square feet. So calculating, you know, how well you did on this investment, a lot of people use that cash on cash return metric. Which, Correct. If you're not familiar with that, you can Google it. A quick Google search will tell you. Basically, you take your annual pre-tax cash flow, which is the twenty-one fifty multiplied by twelve, and you divide that by the total amount invested. So you divide that by the two hundred twenty-six thousand dollars and change. And Mike made about eleven point four percent cash on cash return. So not a bad investment. This is pretty good. It's not a grand slam, but it's another double triple investment. Mm-hmm. That yeah. you know, I mean, you have renters in there. They seem like they're going to want to stay for a long time. So. All right, so once I finished the project, immediately I called up a bank that I deal with a lot, and they gave me a line of credit um, up to $200,000. It's a variable rate. Originally, when I went under the agreement, it was two nine nine. Now I think it's up to four point four nine. Two nine nine is the interest rate yeah, on the line interest, of credit. Yeah, correct. Um, now it's already up to like four point four four nine or something, which it rose a lot, but interest rates are rising a lot right now. And then I got an appraised. And the appraisal came in at 325. Now, like I always tell you guys, appraisals on like a refinance or a line of credit or whatever, these appraisers aren't going to stick their neck out on the line like it would be if it was a sale of a house. Even though these appraisers say it doesn't matter, it matters. So even going off of his appraisal at the time, I could have made probably after paying uh, the buyer's real estate agent and stuff, I probably could have made around $90,000 on the property. On about a... Eight month side hustle. Yeah, eight, yeah, eight month side hustle. So not if too you big. decided to sell. If I decided to sell, yeah. um, we didn't go that route. I like to hold them and, and rent them and, and get some nice tax write offs and get some nice secondary income and all that stuff. But right. um, so the the line of credit is really interesting. It's something we've never done before, but we were interested in it because you don't have to go access that capital right away, which is right. really nice. So you don't have just like if you so you got an appraisal for three twenty five. If you took out eighty percent in a cash out refi, let's just say it's three hundred. Now you have three hundred dollars, three hundred thousand dollars sitting in your bank account. And it's burning a hole in your pocket. Correct. The nice thing about the the line of credit is you can now sit on that like it's a checkbook. You know you don't you you're gonna cash flow that twenty one fifty every month until you find another investment that you want to use. Yeah. Use like, that money for. Like right now I'm having trouble we're having trouble finding a house. I have another house going, but me and Rich are having trouble finding another house right now. And 
part of that 200,000 is meant to buy another house. Well, we're having trouble finding one right now. I'm not gonna jump on something for no reason, but what's nice is that 200,000, that's, you know, it's a line of credit. I'm not paying on that right now. Right. So my rent is 2150, I get a check for 2150, goes right in my bank account. Until I'm ready to use that line of credit, it doesn't affect anything. Right. It was a conventional refinance or a investment refinance. I'm paying that mortgage payment every month and that money's just sitting in my bank account. All right, I think we have to round out the video with the story of Mary Ellen across the street. Uh. <laughs> so while Mike was working on this house, he became friends with the old lady across the street named Mary Ellen. Yeah. Mary Ellen is a very devout Christian. I don't know what type yeah. of, I don't know if she's Catholic Even, or what, but evangelical. Yeah. No, not evangelical. Whatever um. she is. But while Mike was working on the house, Mary Ellen decided to sell her house. Well, she was telling me the whole time she's going to sell it. Right. And she's like, and it was a nice house. It's basically the same as Mike's, but a little bit bigger. It has like kind of a. I didn't know this when I made the bet with her, but <laughs> she told me in the beginning, like five months before she listed it, she's gonna sell for like three seventy five or like three ninety nine or something ridiculous. And this is before I knew she had an in law suite in the basement. But still, this house should not have sold anywhere close. So I told her, I said, "You sell that thing for three seventy five. I'm going to church. You're gonna see me in there." Next to you. The Jews of Screws will yeah. be in church. I'll be in there. And she, that's what all she wanted. She she didn't even want the 375. She wanted me more in church than she wanted the 375. Um, so she listed it for 349 or something or 345. And some gene, someone offered 375. I don't even know how. She got it for 375. No inspections. Blew my mind. Completely blew my mind. And the week before settlement, I was in church with her. Praise oh, be to him. She got you good. Yeah. <laughs> and now I haven't heard from her since. Well, she's in paradise. Yeah, now. she she's, went. She retired. She went to wherever. I don't know where she went, but. Oh, uh, uh, pretty but, far away to live with her daughter, but. She really that. rooked me on that. Yeah. She didn't tell me about her in law suite. That's yeah. what she didn't tell me. It wasn't, Even then. I mean, it was a nice house, but it was like dated. I, yeah, oh, I my God. Know. I can't believe. You got to go knock on the door and ask those people, see what's wrong with them. Unbelievable. And they put $100,000 down. <laughs> I don't know. That's the that's the crazy market these days. All right. Well, uh, nice investment, Mike. Another one bites the dust, I guess. And, yeah. Uh, Time to put this folder away. Yeah. So give us a thumbs up, and we'll get out of here. See you all in the next one.